We do have a rescuer, and his name is Jesus. This is Trinity, and I think you all know this, but maybe you don't know this from home. This is Trinity Utica. I'm Pastor Justin Krupski, and it's so good to be with you all here in the sanctuary. And also, for those of you joining from your homes, thank you for joining us. It's an honor, and it's our prayer, whether you're in your home or whether you're in our sanctuary right now, that God is going to meet you where you are and that you will truly know that you do have a rescuer, and his name is Jesus, and that he's going to give you more faith. Uh, today, if you're in the sanctuary, I hope that you received uh, the communion cup and bread as you uh, came in. We're going to have a special moment in, in the moments to come. And if you're at your house, just want to let you know that you can reach out to the church. We would love to come to your house as pastors and to give you communion. Uh, when you are ready, certainly come up to the sanctuary. This is a safe place. We're being responsible here. And we would just love uh, not just that you get to worship with us from home, but also here in the sanctuary. So again, thank you for coming to worship with us, for tuning in uh, for our worship time. Uh, one of the ways you can partner with us through the worship service, if you're sitting in the pews right now, you can take out your cell phone and you can actually scan that QR code or you can just text 797979, the word Trinity, and you'll get a lot of just uh, connecting points with what we're doing in worship. You can connect through prayer. You can help us evaluate what we're doing through the summer. Also, if you're from home, right, do that right now, 7979 the word Trinity. Um, there's also some other opportunities that you'll see there. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that at 11.15 today, uh, we do actually have a congregation meeting here in the sanctuary, but we also, through our Kids Connection Ministry, Allison, Karen, and Andrew Brazil will be with families too through the summer, but at 11.15 now, online specifically, there'll be a kids service, a kids message with some worship stuff uh, there, and so Allison Carr is putting that uh, together and working with Andrew Brazil and so you can always tune in on that later too uh, for the kiddos and certainly all of us love a good kids message. Not that I don't love the messages that us pastors deliver but the kids message are pretty good 
to. And so as we begin our time, if you please rise, and if you're home, go ahead and, and rise. We're going to start off with a great song of our faith, King of My Heart. But as we get ready for that, again, please be responsible if you're here in the sanctuary wearing your masks and keeping safe social distancing. Uh, but please bow your heads and join me in a word of prayer. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you that we have an opportunity like this to worship you, to have a Sabbath rest in, in you. And we do pray that we could be quiet, that we could be still, and that we could be restored in this moment in our worship time, and that you would meet us where we are. You are the king of our hearts, and you are so good. May we truly give you what you deserve, and that is our full attention right here and, and right now as we lift our voices to you from the sanctuary and from our homes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So who are you? Who are you in Christ? We've been doing a sermon series this month called Hello My Name Is. Hello My Name Is. And today, my hope and my prayer is that you're going to hear God's voice. If you are going through life and you have fear, you have anxiety, perhaps you feel like maybe you don't have value, you don't know why God hasn't taken you home to heaven yet, perhaps you feel lonely, perhaps you just feel tired and weary, perhaps you're wondering what in the world is going on, perhaps your faith has been shaken, perhaps you're feeling discouraged, perhaps you're saying, you know, I feel good, I feel Good. Wherever you are, I pray that God will speak to you. And it's not just something that, that I desire. What I know is that God has spoken and that he is speaking. And that if you're feeling any of those feelings, that you're not alone. And that those who have gone before us, they have felt the same way. In, in a restless world, in a broken world, but in a world where, yes, there is darkness, there is hope and there is light. And I love it that God speaks. Not just now, but that he spoke thousands of years ago, and that has been passed down to us because there is a church, there is a people, we call them the Ephesians, they needed to hear a message of hope. And so God spoke to them, and I believe that these words that he spoke to them are very relevant for us today, and so I want to get into the scriptures with you all as we do every time we gather. And this word comes from Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Where the Apostle Paul tells the church in Ephesus and God speaks through him now because God's word is living and active and is relevant for us, not just them, but for us too. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Just receive that. He's blessed us in Christ. If you have faith, if you have a mustard seed of faith, he's blessed you. And certainly we are here to bless him, but blessings in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places, even as he chose us. Let that word settle in. Even as he chose us in him, chose you in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, set apart, saints, and blameless before him, found without fault, even though we have fault. In love, here's a big word, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons and certainly daughters through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. There's some big words in that text and my hope, my prayer is that it's not just here but it becomes part of this. My heart and your heart and certainly for the church in Ephesus, they had struggles going on. They need to hear those words, not for them to start debating about what predestination is or what election is or what it means that God chose us before the creation of this world, because those are big heady things. And certainly people have tried to study those, written books about those, but that's not what this is about. That's not what Paul's letter to church in Ephesus was about. God wanted to hit his people right here, and he wanted to remind them who they are and his great love for them. So I pray that those words move from our head to our heart, that we would know today that our name is Chosen. That God has chosen you, he's chosen you, he's chosen me, he's chosen us. Right? And what does that mean that he has chosen us, that he has predestined us, that he has elected us? What does that mean? All right. As we break this down, we're going to do some studying through the book of Ephesians today. Uh, but what I want to do a few weeks ago, if you were with us, we talked about being a saint. And I, I was inspired to share with you eight Ps. Eight peas. I don't know if anyone has eaten some peas since then. Um, if you have, I'm sure you're still hungry. And so what I want to do today is not give you eight peas of being a saint, but four T's. Four T's, all right, uh, of what it means to be chosen. These truths, I, I do believe it's going to move this truth from our head to our heart. So if you want to take notes from home, if you want to take notes here, now the four T's of what it means to be chosen. And, and so... Uh, Right away, what we hear God say in the book of Deuteronomy to the nation of Israel, to the people of Israel, Abraham's descendants, he says this, the Lord has chosen you. The Lord has chosen you, this is a thousand years ago, right? Chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession. What we see through the rest of scriptures and even in this scripture, yes, God chose Israel, this nation. Why? 
Why did he choose them? I'm going to bless you to be a blessing to the whole world so that the whole world would know that they are chosen. And Israel lost focus of this quite a bit. It became very self-focused quite a bit. And you see that through the scriptures. They kept forgetting this. But then in Jesus we see, yes, Israel, Israel is the true chosen of God. Those who know that they are loved, that they are treasured by God. Those who know that they are blessed to be a blessing. The true Israel is the Israel that knows this is not just for me. It is for the whole world. But it begins right here. Right? You Right? Your treasured possession, what does that mean? As a chosen child of God, you are treasured. Uh, my sons and I, uh, I became fascinated, we became fascinated with the Discovery Channel over the last couple months and the new show just came out called Dino Hunters. I don't know how many of you ha- have watched that. Uh, Dino Hunters, this is about ranchers that live in Wyoming or Montana or South Dakota who have enough property where they kind of hunt their, their land, not just the ranch cattle, but actually to look for dinosaur bones, dinosaur bones. bones. And I don't know if you know this, I became aware of this. One rancher, 11, nine years ago, he's still trying to broker a deal, and I don't know if he did or not, I haven't seen a new episode, but he's got over 30% of a T-Rex, over 30%, which makes it a full T-Rex. You know how much money he's going to get for that? At least he's trying to close the deal, $4 million. Is there value to that treasure? Absolutely, yes, without a, a, a doubt. And when I was watching it and thinking about this truth, right, we're treasured. Right? We are beyond value in this meal that we're going to have together, the body and blood of Jesus. We see how much value we have. But even more than that, as a treasured possession, as those who are chosen by God, we understand that God has been hunting for us. And that he hunted for, for you. And that's why you're here right now. That's why you're in your home tuning in, right? Somehow, some way, God got to you. And he told you that you are beyond value. I don't know if you know that or not. I pray that you know that. Jesus said this to his disciples in John chapter 15, verse 16. You did not choose me. I chose you. You didn't hunt for me. I hunted for you. You didn't predestine me. Have this in your thought process. Choose me before the beginning of Uh, creation. I chose you before the beginning of creation. I valued you. I I sought you out. I picked you. I handpicked you. I think sometimes we struggle receiving that. Right? You're on the team. You and me, we are on the team. I love what Paul tells the church in in Rome because they were suffering from, from insecurity too and not fully understanding how much God loved them that he chose them. And so he says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Right? There's no condemnation. Right? You're not going to be kicked off the team doing a lot of baseball right now with the boys. Right? You make an error? Are you off the team? No. You, you swing and miss? Are you off the team? No. You get picked off on the bases, are you off the team? No. You misjudge a fly ball, are you off the team? No, you're on the team. Right? There's no condemnation. You're still on the team. Your, your coach believes in you. He, he's picked you for the team. Right? Later on in the same thought process that Paul is sharing in the church in Rome, he actually says, who shall bring any charge against God's chosen? It is God who, who justifies. In the book of Ephesians, Right, we hear this great passage. It is by grace you have been saved. It is by grace you have been chosen. I, I pray that you, you understand that. Right? We, we say it this way. God doesn't uh, choose the qualified. Right? He qualifies the chosen. Right? He puts value into you. Right? I've been thinking about value and, and just how, how you and I are going through life right now. I had the opportunity to do some running this past week uh, and I was running around Stony Creek. And I've always tried to do this actually ever since I think I was in high school, I remember doing this. When you walk the hallways, do you make eye contact with people or do you just kind of put your head down and just walk by them? Right? When you walk the hallway, whether it's in school or at work or even in the, the church, and I, I hope I do this to you, I hope I make eye contact. I know sometimes I get so busy and I'm focused on what's happening, maybe I seem distracted. But when I went running, this past week, I was reminded of this. And so every time I ran by somebody or somebody was walking this way or rollerblading this way or bike riding this way or people were running by me, which actually happens a lot, I always try to see where people are running so they don't pass me because that just hurts a little bit when people are passing me. 
But when we understand that we are chosen, treasured, right? We understand that others are treasured. Others have value. And the beauty of it is when you are walking by somebody, even in today's world where a lot of us are wearing masks, what happens when I say, hey, how you doing? Hey, good job. Hey, keep it up. Hi. <laughs> it, it's shocking how people's eyes will light up. Wow, someone noticed me. Someone's saying hi. Someone's saying hi back. There's actually a, a skateboarder that went by me the other day. He's like, good job, man. He beat me to the punch where I was going to tell him good job. But you know what happened? All of a sudden the pain dissipated just a little bit. Right? You know what happens when I actually say hi to somebody when I'm running? Even though I'm having a hard time breathing, my knees are hurting, my hips are hurting, my back's hurting, and I'm wondering why am I doing this and I'm thinking about potato chips the whole time because I'm just so hungry. <laughs> the pain leaves when I add value to other people. Right? We're treasured. You are treasured. You know who else is treasured? The whole world. For God so loved the whole world. That's the gospel. That's the message of our faith. Not just that we are chosen, but we are chosen to let the world know that they are chosen. That's the truth of our faith. That's what we know. So the first T is chosen people are our treasure. The second T is this, is chosen people are teachable. Chosen people are, are teachable. Teachable, a teachable heart. Not a mind that is teachable, but a heart that is teachable. The scriptures say God desires a contrite heart, a humble heart, a teachable heart. And so in the book of Ephesians, you see in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21, how Paul is striking a nerve to those who are, are chosen. He says, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him. Right? You were taught about him and by him and through him and for him. You guys are teachable. You're teachable. As truth is in Jesus, the truth, right? We're taught the truth. I don't know if anyone here has been watching the news lately. Uh, I think over the last four months, I've watched more news than I could watch in an entire lifetime, my first 42 years of life. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. And certainly it is good to know what is going on. We need to understand, right? Seek to understand and just try to get a feel of what's going on in, in our world. Right? It was Tuesday night, I believe it was, where I actually got consumed just watching the news and just reading the headlines. You know what, how I felt after reading the headlines? <laughs> it was pretty overwhelming. Right? And then 15 minutes later, Jenny and I are going to bed and we're, we're praying together. And I was reminded of what the true headline is. Right? The Yule Glacial, the, the gospel, the extra, extra read all about it. It was in the Roman culture 2,000 years ago. You know what the true headline is? That wasn't just then, but is still today. Jesus rose again from the dead. <laughs> Jesus rose again from the dead. Right? If this is the headline, we can deal with these headlines. Because he has overcome and there is courage and strength when we know what the true headline is. And there is a peace that surpasses all human understanding. And when we know that this is the headline, who is it that we listen to? Right? Yes, we need to, to listen to one another. Without a doubt. But who do we need to listen to first and foremost? Is it the news? Right? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. We need to listen to him. We need to be teachable from him. And what's his greatest teaching? What's the greatest movement, the greatest miracle, the greatest action that we can do? Love. Love. And our teacher, Jesus, has told us something about love, and I can't help but think about it right now. He told us, right, if somebody dishonors you, what do you do in return? You don't dishonor them. Amen? Right, we need to be taught by that over and over again in anything and everything. Chloe Krupski, right, if you're watching right now, Oliver, Toby Graham, if one of your siblings right, does something mean to you, do you have permission to retaliate? Absolutely not. So drop what you're doing right now and don't retaliate. <laughs> this is our, our faith. As chosen people, are we teachable? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Chosen people are teachable. The third T is this. Chosen people are good teammates. Chosen people are good 
teammates, not just treasured, not just teachable, but we're good teammates, good teammates. In the book of Ephesians, we, we see Paul teach through the power of the Spirit of God. He teaches about being a good teammate. He talks to husbands and wives, right? How do you be a good teammate? You sacrifice for each other. You submit to one another, right? He, he talks to parents. How do you be a good teammate to your kids? You don't exasperate them, right? Patience. Kids, how are you a good teammate in your home to your parents or even to your elderly parents? Right? You, you honor them. Right? Chosen people are good teammates. Bosses, how do you treat your employees? Employees, how do you work? What's your work ethic like? Read Ephesians. Right? We're called to be good teammates, to honor each other, to sacrifice for each other. That's what good teammates do. Right? When I go running around Stony Creek, you know what makes life even easier than just giving value to others and, and waving to people and letting people encourage me? This doesn't happen that much. But if someone runs with me, or if one of my kids gets on their bike and they just kind of bike along me, along with me, it's so good to have a teammate. And I want you to know, and I love this being here in the sanctuary because I can see you all and I see teammates. Right? Look around for a moment. I give you permission to look around. Right? There's some teammates here. Right? If you're at home and you're by yourself, just know there's teammates here for you. We are for you. If you're at home and you're with your family, right, look around. Right? Teammates. Teammates. Call to honor each other, sacrifice for each other, to forgive each other, to pray for each other, which we're going to do in a moment. The next T, the final T is this, is that chosen people make the most of their time. Chosen people make the most of their time. As Paul's trying to get this message across in the sermon of the church in Ephesus, as God's speaking to them and he's speaking to us, he says this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Make the most, make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of your time as a chosen person by God. Make the most of your time here on earth. I don't know what your world has been like, and I don't want to put this on you, but this is the truth. This is the reality in which we live in. Over the last eight days, I've been humbled uh, to walk with seven different families right? as their family members now with Jesus in heaven. And in that grief, there is certainly hope. Right? But there, there's a heaviness that settles in. My father, many of you know this, he had a massive heart attack this past Saturday. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for his health that he has. Right? He's still with us on this side of eternity. But what my dad told me and my, my siblings and his grandkids... Right, make the most of your opportunities. Right, grandpa's still here. Dad's still here. I'm going to make the most of my opportunity. God's given me another chance. But make the most of your opportunity. Right, if you're here right now, if you're watching, right, we are breathing. We are living. You know what that means? God's chosen us for such a time as this in 2020. This is not an accident. He knew that you and I would have breath on this side of eternity in this moment. He's calling us to be his chosen people, to live out the mission and the purpose, to share his story with love, to let the whole world know that they are chosen. How many of us are breathing right now? Even through our masks, right? We are, we are breathing. Oh my goodness. Right? Making the most of every opportunity. So over this last month, I, I pray that we at Trinity, we've been making the most of every opportunity, not just through worship, but through our, our social ministry, through our kids' ministries, through all the opportunities that God has given to us. And certainly in worship, right, we've been talking about who we are, who we are today. I mean, who are we? Right? Yeah, I'm a pastor, I'm a, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm, I'm a friend, I'm a nephew, I'm a cousin, I'm an uncle. Right? That stuff matters. But you know what matters most? What helps me be that person that God has created to be? When I know that my name is believer, my name is follower, my name is saint, my name is child of God, and today my name is chosen. And I pray that it's not just here, that it's right here. Because who we are in Christ, who you are in Christ, is what matters. That is the headline. And I pray that you hear that 
and you receive it. As we seek to make the most of our opportunity that God has given to us, I want to share with you a word. And I'm actually going to ask that you read this from your home and also here in the sanctuary. This is a word that a man named Joshua, a man who saw miraculous acts of God, a man who went through huge battles and trials, a man who was able to settle into the promised land. Why was he in the promised land? Right, to share the promised land with the whole world, the promised land of a relationship with God. And so he looked at the children of Israel, those who were chosen to be a blessing, to be the salt and the light of the world. And here's what he said, and here's what we're going to say in this moment. So let's say this together if you're with me. Uh, a, ch a chosen child of God. Let's read this together. Choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house here at Trinity, what are we going to do? We are going to serve the Lord. If you please bow your heads as we pray. So gracious Father, Lord, we're receiving this message today that we are chosen, that we are predestined, that we are elected, not for selfish reasons. Lord, but to be a blessing to others, let the whole world know that they in fact are chosen, they are valued, that they are loved by you. Lord, as we receive this message, I, I pray that we would know that we each have value. That we would each inhale your very truth and your purpose for us. We are your children. We are chosen by you. That we would know that you picked us, that you hunted us out. That we'd share that with others. Lord, that we would continue to be teachable. That we continue to let your words speak to us. The word of the risen one, the resurrected one, the one who was and is and will always be, Lord Jesus, that you would teach us how to live, how to make the most of the opportunities that you give to us. And that we would be good teammates. Lord, as good teammates, uh, you have asked us to pray for one another. Lord, so in this moment, in, in the quietness of our own hearts, from our homes, in our sanctuary, Lord, there are needs of people all around us. And certainly we have our own needs we want to lift those up to you in the silent moment. So please hear our petitions as we lay them before your throne of grace silently from our hearts. And Lord, we have an opportunity uh, in this moment or to confess sins to you and to receive forgiveness and so as we are teachable as we have a contrite heart Lord may we repent of the things that are not of you may we lay those before your throne of grace so please hear our silent confessions in this moment Lord, we thank you that we are still on the team. Lord, that there's no condemnation. That you are the one who justifies us. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, for the gift of this meal that many of us are about to partake in. Lord, forgiveness of sins. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Your mercy that is new today. And so may we move forward and make the most of every opportunity and as we make the most of our, every opportunity, continue to teach us how to pray. And we thank you that you have taught us how to pray in the petitions that we call the Lord's Prayer. So we pray these from our homes and, and in the sanctuary right now. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And during our worship time, I do want to let you know this, uh, that our ministries are continuing. 
They're continuing. They've been continuing for the last four months for 130 plus years through Trinity. Right? God says his, his church, right, his kingdom will never fail. It will keep moving forward. And that's what he's been doing. And the way he's been doing that is certainly through our ministries and certainly through you partnering with us through your offerings. So I want to thank you for your generosity, for your, your trust, not in money, but your trust in God uh, it, it, through your offerings and just acknowledge that. Um, and, and so where your heart is, there your treasure is also. That's what Jesus said. And, and so thank you for partnering with us. Um, I know many of you dropped off your offerings as you came. I know many of you continue to give online. And so just thank you. Thank you, and I pray that God continues to provide for you and certainly that God continues to move his kingdom forward through us, through us. You're part of Trinity. So not just the ministries of Trinity that we talk about all the time and we're a part of, but your ministries in your home. God is working through all of us, and so thank you for that. Um, as a people, right, it's important for us to be reminded what it is that we believe. In. And so there's a lot of creeds. There's the Apostles' Creed, a Nicene Creed, an Athanasian Creed. There's a bunch of other creeds that I can't even remember the names of that churches have stated. But you know what? There's some ancient creeds that the early church actually put together, and they're in the Scriptures. You see them every once in a while. Some people say they're hymns, but they're really, they're statements of faith. They're creeds. And there's a creed about Jesus. And as we get ready for communion, I, I want to share this creed together. And it comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. And so let's say this statement of faith together as we get ready for this moment. And even if you're in your homes, if you're not getting ready for communion with us, let's say this together because this is certainly an intimate moment that we get to share with our Savior Jesus. So let's remind ourselves and let's tell God who it is that we know he is in Jesus. And so together, let's share this statement of faith, this creed uh, passed down to us through the scriptures. Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord and he has invited us. He's invited us to the table to have a family meal with him. And so if you're in the sanctuary in this moment, I do wanna encourage you, go ahead and uh, take the top wrapper off so you can get to the bread. And then if you're able to, as you hold the bread in your hand and, and wait for those words of institution, those words that Jesus spoke, go ahead and take the next a wrapper off too as we prepare to receive the body and the blood of our Savior Jesus, this intimate uh, meal uh, together. So let me remind you what Jesus, the one whose name is above every name, uh, spoke on the night that he was betrayed during the Passover meal, the Freedom Feast meal, gathered with his disciples. It says over the course of the meal, Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he blessed and he gave it to them, said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Take and eat, this is Christ's body given for you. And after supper, he did the same thing with the cup. After he gave thanks, he blessed it. He gave to them and said, take and drink every one of you. This is the, my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink this often in remembrance of me. So take and drink the blood of your Savior Jesus poured out for you. May the true body and the true blood of our Savior Jesus, of your Savior Jesus, continue to preserve you and strengthen your faith into life everlasting. Jesus' name, amen. So it is so good to be with you all here and so good that you have chosen to worship with us. There's a great song of our faith that Bree and Riley are going to lead us in right now. And certainly as we wrap up the sermon series, Hello, My Name Is, this is appropriate. It's called Who You Say I Am. Who You Say I Am. And so if you're in the sanctuary, please rise. If you're in your homes, please rise and let's sing this out. Sing these words of our faith out. I that the highest king would welcome 
I was lost, but he brought me, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me, who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed, I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Last he is ransomed, oh his grace runs. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh is free indeed. I'm a child. a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I'm chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. And so again, thank you so much uh, for joining us here in, in the sanctuary. We're continuing to evaluate our online and our on-site worship, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us pastors to let us know if you have thoughts, ways that we can uh, make worship the best it can be, both online and here. And I want to remind you, 11.15, not just a congregational meeting, but we have our kids worship time at 11.15 online, and so check that out. Miss Allison Carr is a great message for everybody. Um, but as we go, please receive this blessing. May God our Father continue to remind us who we are who we are. May Jesus continue to be the focus of our faith and may the Holy Spirit that has brought us here, that lives in you and me, that is giving us breath right now, may he continue to enable us to live out the purpose for which he has created us and that is to love our neighbors, to share his story with love. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. We hope to see you all next weekend.